Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joshua Bay with Agents Grab. Here we are located in Silicon Valley hosting our first webinar. This webinar is sponsored by Bitline. Bitline is the creator of Agents Graph, the multi-model graph database. The graph database is the most rapidly growing sector in the database industry as more organizations need to handle the complexity of the data to make smart decisions. The use cases vary from knowledge graph, network infra management, recommendation engine, and so on. It is also a solid foundation for machine learning and blockchain technologies. Gartner recently picked the graph database as a top 10 data and analytics technology. It says that the application of graph processing and graph DBMSs will grow at 100% annually through 2022. All right, uh, today our speaker is Aya Abdisho. She is the technical engineer with Agents Graph team. Aya, would you please tell us a bit of, about yourself? Of course, thank you, Joshua. Uh, thank you for the opening. Um, um, just before I begin, I just want to thank you all for joining us today and uh, taking the time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. And uh, yeah, I hope at the end uh, you gain some new information. Uh, so Joshua mentioned, uh, my name is Aya, and uh, I work with Bit9 and Agents Graph team. Uh, I'm responsible for the implementation of Agents Graph and also uh, Graph Consulting uh, here at Bit9. So when you joined Bit9, what attracted you most to using the Graph database? Uh, actually, Joshua, this is a great question. Uh, when I first joined the Bit9 um, and I started using Agents Graph, um, I, I didn't have much experience with Graph database. And um, through using it, uh, I just found out, discovered that it's a completely different perspective and um, point of view. Uh, regarding databases. Uh, through all this structure of the graph, I was able uh, to see how all those connected data um, have meaning and what, um, like how can I extract more meaning through those data. So uh, it was a great um, experience. That sounds nice. So Aya, what would you like to speak about today? Um, today, I would like to share the same experience and same knowledge, and uh, I want uh, to at least, uh, as, long, as far as I can, uh, give this uh, insight to other people as well. So uh, thank you for joining again. And um, to begin, I would like to uh, give you a little bit background of Agents Graph and uh, what is Agents Graph. So uh, Agents Graph uh, is a multi-model graph database which is built on PostgreSQL. And um, as I mentioned, it's multi-model, so it can support different for data formats as it has different models, which I'm gonna get to that later in my next slide. Agents Graph is a core technology of Bit9, and here at Bit9, uh, we have different offices in different locations. I'm with our Santa Clara team here in California. Uh, but we have offices in New York, and uh, we have an uh, office in London, UK, and also South, uh, Seoul, South Korea. And uh, recently, we are opening our new office in Japan. So we're growing, and uh, we would like everyone um, to know more about uh, Agents Graph. Uh, here at Bit9, uh, our focuses are to provide different values to our core technology, which is Agents Graph. Uh, we offer graph database, we offer uh, other uh, models such as relational and um, other NoSQL structures. Uh, we uh, provide and we offer outstanding performance compared to our competitor. Uh, we, have our, we have our LDBC benchmarking results. And uh, also, at the same time, we provide our graph consulting, we have feature development, uh, and also graph algorithm. And on top of it, nowadays, uh, it's important. So uh, we have our big data analysis. To give you a little bit uh, more uh, information about what we're talking today, and uh, this is our today's agenda. Uh, I'm going to talk about graph database and the importance of this uh, model nowadays. 
then I'm gonna dive into the introduction of agent scrap and the importance of one of this feature, which is multimodal. Then after I finish that section, uh, I'll do a quick demo, live demo, on one of the um, agent scrappers use case, uh, which is asset management system. And uh, at the end, um, I'll start to answer the questions. And uh, you, guys, uh, you guys can um, always uh, send your question whenever you have it to our chat box. But uh, I'll be answering the question at the end of this uh, presentation. So please feel free to send your question. Now, graph database and uh, why we are even focusing and we are shifting to this concept. Before we answer this question, it's always good to know what are we talking about? What is a graph? Um, so as you can see in the slide, a graph is composed of vertexes and edges that represent entities and relationship among them. So if you are familiar, which I'm pretty much sure uh, most of you are familiar with the concept of a uh, graph algorithm in the mathematics, uh, the structure is the same and uh, also the vertexes and edges. So the combination of them will give us the ability to understand better what's the connection of all those entities through those edges. Now, uh, the question always comes up that why? Why do we need to know more about graph or why even now? And uh, to answer to this question is that because nowadays everything is connected and we are living in a hyper connected world. Having graph model can help us to gain visionary insight through this linked structure. And to be honest, it's not an exaggeration to say that all changes in technology, such as AI, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and big data, already transform the data utilization in the next age of fourth industrial. So now, the, questions, the question to be uh, asked in this situation is that, is it possible to achieve this goal through the existing database system, through the existing um, legacy relational system. Now, to give you um, better answers and better insight, um, I'll talk about more about the graph model and the structure and how it can help us to extract more uh, information and more meaning from our uh, connected data. So if you look at this slide, uh, you can see that uh, we have a vertex and we have an edge. And as I mentioned, the graph structure is a combination of, it's a composed of uh, both uh, this edge and vertex. So for example, uh, let's assume that uh, this is uh, the user label, which, uh, so when I say label, it's the group of vertexes. So we call this a user. So let's say this user's name is Hong, and Hong is purchasing something, uh, let's say online, in any of the websites. So through this connection from the user, and we know what is he doing, and to see that what he is purchasing, we can, after that, go through that relationship, go through those uh, history of his purchasing, and we can see what's his pattern, what he likes, and what is he buying more. And after that, we can start, uh, let's say, to think about the recommendation system. We can recommend him next time to buy something what he likes. So we are uh, making it more higher chance to um, like, uh, so he can like the item. And uh, also in this uh, slide, you are seeing the graph model. Here uh, we have, again, we have a label user, and we have three different vertexes. We have, um, in the middle, we have user Jane. Uh, which uh, is 27 years old, he's an engineer, and uh, some of his hobbies, uh, he likes soccer and he uh, likes graphing. Uh, we know through these edges that there's a relationship between uh, user James and also Sarah, and also on the other hand, Bill. By going more uh, and diving more through this relationship, uh, we can see that it, how exactly this user James is connected it to Bill and what's the exact relationship to Sarah. So uh, we can see that Sarah is a sister and also uh, James is a neighbor of Bill. 
So uh, as you can see, all these are vertexes and the edge, which is a relationship in this case. And also each edge and each vertex can have its own attribute, which in this case we call them properties. So as you can see, I mentioned a user here can have name, uh, gender, age, occupation, and hobbies. And also at the same time, edge can have its own properties, which in this case, um, the type of the relationship, neighbor or sister. So we're getting more information through all this structure. Now, uh, to give you a little bit better idea uh, the how the structure and, uh, of the uh, RDB is, uh, the graph is compared to RDB, uh, as you can see here, in relational databases, every, all the data are stored in a table format. So we have customer table here, order, product, and um, if you look at the graph structure, uh, we have vertexes and edges. We have one customer bill, uh, he bought something, and uh, also uh, we have all the attributes of uh, its specific uh, vertex or edge. Now, uh, to go more detail uh, to the comparison and to see how we can even uh, convert a relational structure to graph structure. So I'm pretty much familiar that most of you um, have seen this uh, system before. It's a flight booking system, uh, which is really famous uh, in relational uh, system in relational databases. So uh, as you can see in a relational databases, this uh, flight booking system has different tables such as users, um, booking, passengers, flights, and journey. And uh, let's say now we have this and we wanted to convert this structure to a graph structure. So by going to the next slide, uh, I can tell you that whenever you have a relational uh, structure and you want to convert it to a graph, all the tables that you have in your uh, relational becomes labeled. So for example, tables such as user booking, they all become labeled. And the primary keys become unique property in that vertex. And other columns become property of the vertex. Now, since the graph model has relationship, all those foreign keys in the table in the relational format will be removed and join table becomes edges. And all those foreign keys that we removed from the table becomes the property of an edge, which is, um, I mean, it's an attribute of um, the specific edge. And by going to the next slide, you can see that this is a graph model of the same um, book uh, flight system. So you can see that this was our uh, user table, which becomes a vertex. This, is, this was our booking and journey. So our tables become label, and uh, all those uh, relationship and foreign keys becomes our edges in this example. So you're seeing a graph model of the same flight booking system. Now, uh, it's always a question uh, that uh, what's the advantages of having graphs over relational, and one of the bold, um, I can say, advantages is that uh, let's say we are looking for a specific query, and we're looking for a specific, uh, basically, example in this uh, slide. So let's say we're looking to search for a friend of friend of Alyssa in this uh, query. And let's say that we know that data are all uh, stored in a different table based on the person or person's friend. So now, in a relational databases, uh, we have to go back and forward between these uh, tables if we are looking to search for the friend of friend. And uh, we all know that going back and forward requires us to use join operation, which are really expensive operation. It's costly and it's time consuming. So, but in the graph database, it comes a different story. You don't need to um, really go back and forward. You can just follow the pattern to find uh, your answer. So for example, here's user Alyssa. You can go see who's friend with her and then Bob and also who's friend with Bob. So going through these edges and relationship, you can simply uh, find um, your basically answer. And also we ran some, uh, uh, we ran some uh, tests and queries here. As you can see, this is 
the comparison between relational and graph DB. So uh, as you can see, if you go deeper and deeper, graph database is performing better. And even at some point on the fifth level, um, relational databases couldn't perform. It couldn't even finish, and it was unfinished. But um, at, the, at the same time, graph database performed, and uh, it was executed, and we got our results. Now, one also advantages and really a nice feature uh, of the graph database is that uh, it's schema-free. And when I say schema free, I mean that any changes can be easily applied to graph database since it's schema free. So let's say in relational databases, we need to add a new attribute. So we know that we have to add a new column. And um, by that, we need to go through the table structure and we need to modify it and make changes, which can be time consuming. But in graph databases, instead of that, we can just simply other properties to the existing uh, vertex, which doesn't require any modification, any changes. So any changes can be really easily applied in this uh, model, which gives us the advantages of uh, time and also effort. Now, uh, after I give you a little bit more information about Graph, uh, what I would like to uh, talk about is our core technology, uh, which is Agents Graph. As I mentioned uh, at the beginning, Agents Graph is a multi-model database. And when we say multi-model, it means that it offers different uh, models. Uh, Agents Graph supports graph model, and in addition, supports relational, document, and key value, which is all optimized for storing data, processing data, querying data, and also analyzing all those highly connected data. What you're seeing in this slide is a diagram of uh, the scale to size and scale to complexity when it comes to the term and concept of databases. Um, as we know, uh, or we might just heard it, a graph database uh, is performing and it has better performance and, uh, when it comes to the scale to complexity. So it can perform much better compared to the relational uh, structure and databases which sometimes has a trade-off uh, when it comes to both terms, to the complexity and size. That's why um, after relational, the concept of NoSQL was uh, basically uh, introduced. Now, by saying that, uh, we can guess that having a multi-model database which can support all those models will give us the flexibility and the opportunity to perform better when it comes to the size and also when it comes to the complexity. So Agents Graph as a multi-model can give us this opportunity in this case. Now let's talk about Agents Graph as a solution. So Agents Graph as a solution can give us the ability to have all various data and all various data types all in one storage. And by having them in one storage and by using some of the tools of Agents Graph, such as Graph Visualization Tool and also Graph Data Analytics Framework, we can work on those data and we can solve some of the solution and use cases that is out there in the world, such as recommendation engine, such as fraud detection system, or uh, such as smart factory uh, city and it's all more such as network monitoring. Here uh, in this slide, uh, it's uh, Agent Graph architecture that you're seeing. Uh, one of the things that uh, our team are really proud uh, is that our developers uh, were able to have all this component integrated all together in one place, so nothing is separated in this architecture. And also what you see here in different boxes is this is our patent for a different part. So if we start from the low level, you can see that this is our uh, storages, our relational storage and graph storage, uh, which has its own pattern. Uh, it has, it's for method and device for searching between different data formats all in one place. 
And also, if you go up to the next layer, and we have our cache layer for data processing and for data mapping. If we jump on to our next layer, here we have our hybrid query rewriter, which one of the features for predicting method. The next layer here, we have our graph query processing engine, which is one of our important layers, which gives you the ability to process integrated qu queries and also uh, go through all those data processing methods. And also in the top layer of this architecture, uh, we have our distributed graph query processing system among all its methods. So the overall architecture of Agents Graph uh, is in this slide and you're looking at it. Then uh, I'll, what I wanna talk about in this slide, uh, I wanna give you uh, a more information uh, of what's the advantages of having multi-model over only a single model. So having a multi-model and different models in all in one place uh, can give you the ability to process and work on the agile data with minimized risk. So having all those different formats all in one place will uh, help you to uh, model and process better. And also, it will give you the ability to store uh, relational and also graph databases separately. So you can have it separately if you want to work separately, or you can also uh, work um, as a combination of all those storage. And also, depending on the characteristic of data, data analysis can be efficiently done by storing data in both relational database and graph database. So this was some of the uh, advantages of multi-model, which can also be uh, categorized to collection and processing of data, the storage, and also have you analyze your data compared to your model. Now, by saying that Agents Graph is a multi-model graph database, uh, also uh, it will give you the ability uh, to query from both relational and graph data at the same time. And by saying that, it means that you can, you can write hybrid query. So you can have two languages as in one query. For example, if you look at this top uh, query here, it's a combination of Cypher, which is a language for pure graph, and also SQL, which is a relational uh, language. So, uh, if you look at it here, our inner query is a Cypher query. So by running that and plugging the result um, in, the Cypher, in the SQL query as our outer query, you can get your result both from uh, relational and graph databases. And also, uh, you have opportunity, you have ability to write a different way, opposite way. You can have your SQL query inside of the uh, Cypher query. And by running that, uh, at the same time, you having access to the different models. Now, a uh, question might come up that uh, why not keeping our relational database, the one that the existing relational database, and just add a different graph database to it? And uh, the answer is straightforward. It's a common sense. The reason is that by adding any separated graph database, you need uh, you you have to go through additional costs. You have to go through all the process of implementation, integration, and also at the same time having two separated um, application and system might give you a network traffic. So by using Agents Graph and by having all the model at the same storage and place, you're avoiding that additional cost and also the network traffic. Also, uh, here we have our uh, foreign data wrapper for Agents Graph, which gives the ability to the user to transfer her, their data from different sources uh, to Agents Graph. And data can be from uh, web, it can be a web data, it can be a file data, it can be from different database, databases, and also it can be a big data, let's say from different sources such as Hadoop or any other structures. You can, you can easily transfer your data uh, from those sources via our foreign data wrapper engine to Agents Graph, and you can start modeling, processing, and querying your data. 
Now, in this slide, I would like to talk about uh, some of the performance of agents graph, uh, performance test results, uh, which we uh, basically applied on agents graph and one of our competitors in this case. So in this slide, what you're seeing, you're seeing some of the complex queries uh, from this uh, LDVC benchmarking. Uh, all those orangish uh, colors that you can see here is agents graph uh, results. And the blue ones is one of our competitors. Uh, and uh, so this is, this, this is different queries which were run, and these are the results. So to give you a little bit more uh, detail, let's look at query number four in this example. If you look at uh, this query number four, you can see that agents graph was uh, much faster and performed better. And it should be something close to 2,000 times uh, faster than our competitor. And um, because I mentioned this query, I would like to also give you a little bit more um, detail about this query. You might be curious that what that query does, that agents graph perform better. So in this query, we were looking um, to find the new topics. And by saying that, we mean that we, are, we were looking to uh, find the tags. Let's say, let's, start, let's assume from this point. So this is our start point. So we were saying, giving a start point, find tags that are attached to posts that were created by that person's friend. Now, we were only looking to include tags that were attached to friends' posts created within a given time interval, and that were never attached to friends' posts created before this interval. So basically, we were looking for two patterns. Pattern one which as you can see, start point is here, friends, new post, and the tags of that new post. Now, what we're looking for, we were looking for to exclude all uh, this pattern, all those tags that's from the old post. So find pattern one, which does not have pattern two, and this query number four. Now, if you look at this, this was the query that was only applied in one uh, model, which was a graph model or competitor. It's a pure graph, and the language was a uh, pure graph cipher. So in this example, as you can see, this is a cipher query, cipher query, and this is a pattern one. We were looking for all those tags attached to the post in a specific time interval, and also same here, pattern two, in a specific time interval, which was the old post. So uh, what we did at the end, uh, as I mentioned, we wanted to exclude the pattern two, which were the old uh, posts. Now, uh, this query took a lot of time, and the reason was that we were search, we were <coughs> excuse me, we were searching for pattern two for each occurrence of pattern one, which was taking us n times m travel cell which N stands for the number of appearances of pattern two, and um, M was for the number of, uh, sorry, pattern one and pattern two. Now, what we did in agents graph, we used the feature of agents graph and the, its capability of having a um, hybrid query and by uh, having using its multi-model uh, database. So what we did, we had SQL and we had Cypher at the same time in agents graph. So as you can see, our inner queries here, pattern one and two, was uh, wrote in, in um, Cypher query language. And uh, after that, uh, this query finds pattern one and pattern two respectfully and excluded it, the pattern two here, and they, by doing the left join, they were able to have a better per performance and uh, faster. So in this query, we only needed it N plus N travel, so instead of n times m, which was the reason of better performance and uh, better results. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Agents Graph uh, is built on PostgreSQL, and it's the only graph DBMS integrated with the PostgreSQL. And for this reason, also agents graph uh, can support and can cover, can give you the ability to access and use all the Postgres functionalities and features. So at the same time, you have agents graph feature and functions, and also you have access to all those Postgres uh, functions. 
Next, in this slide, uh, I would like to talk about uh, some of the agents graph use cases. Uh, so we're going to go look at this uh, together. The first use case of agents graph is MDM, or master data management use case. In this use case, some of the challenges that they were facing was lack of data standardization. And also, uh, there were no data model to view, modify, or analyze uh, their data. So by using agents graph, they were able to standardize their data all in one repository, different format of data and types. And they were able to construct a stable and flexible graph model. And by doing that, some of the advantages and benefit for them was to they were able to strengthen data sharing, and also they were able to better uh, communicate uh, in more efficient way. The next use case of agents graph is CTI, Cyber Threat Intelligence. Uh, the challenge uh, in this use case was the continuous evolution of cyber attack, and also at the same time limited performance of the table structure. Now, what Agents Graph was able to offer them was an integrated relation analysis system and also a real-time monitoring system. And some of the benefit of having those systems was a rapid response system, which were ensuring them a near real-time analysis. And also, they were able to do more deep learning and use the deep learning technology to enhance their pre-prediction of all those attacks. Now, in the next use case, uh, which is the use case three, uh, it's our knowledge graph use case, uh, which is known also for a personalized education system and service. In this use case, uh, what they're looking for, the need was to develop a customized learning uh, recommendation system. And also, the table structure in this case wasn't really a good option. It wasn't give them any flexibility and uh, for applying their uh, basically needs. So what they did uh, through Agents Graph, they were able to build an organic learning graph model. And also, they were able to build a behavioral data analysis model. And through this uh, solution, they were able to introduce a learning level diagnosis and also curriculum recommendation system. And also, they were able to develop new educational service product uh, in this uh, use case. The next use case that I would like to talk about here is a performance management. Uh, the need in this use case was a system to manage collaboration more efficiently. And also, uh, data were different, and it was from different, uh, basically, resources and different formats. So by using Agents Graph, they were able to implement a system to view, manage, and analyze uh, all those collaboration processes. And also, some of the benefit uh, through that was uh, they were able to smoothly communicate and efficiently uh, perform all those management uh, all on the centralized data. And they were able to do more quickly uh, cost analysis and responses for that issue. Now, uh, in our next slide, you are seeing our use case uh, number five, uh, which is one of the most important uh, use cases of Agents Graph. It's our asset management use case, uh, which is known also for the failure analysis and monitoring system, which I'm going to go more uh, deep into this use case and I will give you more information. Um, and this is the use case. I'm going to do a demo on it as well. So we're going to go uh, look at this use case together and uh, gain more uh, knowledge through this use case. So as I mentioned, the name of this use case is Asset Management System. And uh, to give you a little bit of background that uh, what, um, what was this use case and uh, what was the challenges that they're facing, uh, this use case was uh, basically uh, from one of the biggest and largest uh, power utilization uh, companies. Uh, in this case, they were looking uh, to, implement an uh, to implement an advanced metering system for all their clients. 
But uh, by doing and by saying that they were uh, implementing this, uh, they started facing some challenges and some issues. And some of them was uh, they were had, having problem with the labor calls, billing errors, and time. And the reason was that, as all we know, in a power utility companies, there's a network. The structure is kind of like a network. Devices all are connected to each other. So different devices and network has relationship with other ones. And by saying this, uh, let's say if the network has an issue and has a failure, it's not easy to go through all those relationships in a table structure and to find out that uh, what is causing the issue. So how, by, uh, their legacy system was relational system. And um, all these issues that you're seeing here was uh, coming because of those structure, because uh, of not, it wasn't easy to find all those connections. So now what they decided it to do, they decided it to restructure uh, their uh, basically existing system. And by using and the help of agent scrap, they were able to uh, avoid the incorrect billing and the high cost. And why and what was the structure that they come up with? As you can see in this picture, they decided it to use uh, the feature of a multi-model, which Agent Graph is offering. So uh, they decided it to keep their time series data, which were their log data, in a table format, in a relational part of the Agent Graph. And also, they, were, they decided it to remodel their network topology in a graph model of Agent Graph. So to summarize it, they have their graph, they have their network topology as a graph and also all the uh, time series data in a relational table. So what you're seeing here, uh, it's a structure of their network. It's their network topology, which is a graph model, as I mentioned uh, previously. So uh, in this structure, they have different layers. As you can see, it's an IoT layer, the low level I'm uh, pointing out here, which is basically the combination uh, of all those uh, IoT devices, such as sensors and such as uh, other devices, which collect all the data. And the next layer is the PLC layer, <clears throat> which stands for the power line uh, communication layer. It includes all the modem devices. The next layer in this topology was DCU layer, which stands for the data centralized unit, which as you can see, it was a combination of master DCU and also slave DCU. In the next layer, FEP layer, which stands for the front end processing layer, uh, we have our FEP device, as you can see. And this is a summarize of this topology, IoT. We're connected to the modem through this interfaces. And also modem is connected to the DCU through this incoming network and also DCU to the FEP through the main network. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, they kept uh, two different, uh, they, they used the multi-model feature. They kept their network topology here and also their log data here. So by saying this, I mean that every device in a graph model has its own information in a relational as well. So let's look at, let's say, modem. So in a graph model, modem uh, has its own ID, has its own abnormal type or abnormal uh, value. And at the same time, there is a table related to this modem to keep its uh, log data. So for example, it's uh, upload or download speed, uh, the modem date and time, and also, for example, its CPU usage. So among every device in uh, graph, there's a table for it as well. Now, uh, to give you a little bit more uh, detail about the structure, in this specific use case, uh, we had one FEP, uh, 25 DCUs, um, 150 modem devices, and 1,500 IoT uh, devices. And, and the way that uh, they structured it was that one FEP was uh, basically connected to 25 DCUs, and one DCU was connected to six modem, and uh, one modem to 10 IoT devices. And uh, also, uh, all those uh, data was real time. It was updating every 15 minutes from the network. 
and uh, also uh, some of the trouble and issue that they were causing was the upload speed or download speed, memory usage, and CPU usage, which I'm going to get to that in the next slide better. Now, what you're looking here in this slide basically is the structure of this use case, how they basically organize it and model it. So you can see that this is the relational in the left side of the slide, and this is the graph uh, model. So in the center of this slide, you're seeing some numbers. And what is it? These are the threshold that they set for this use case. So for example, uh, for the uh, DCU, uh, this is a threshold table. The CPU threshold should be 80. So anything not in this range, which uh, indicates that there's an issue with that device. And also for the memory, it was uh, anything greater than 99 and also greater than 80 uh, for the CPU usage. And so let's take a look at more detail and closely to uh, the structure. So let's say we, we are going to this table and we are looking for a specific device, which in this case has the ID of DCU01. So as you can see, uh, let's go to the, this red highlighted one. We can see that this is our upload uh, speed, which is 20. So by going to this uh, threshold, we can see that for the uh, upload uh, speed, the threshold is, uh, I mean, this 20 is not in the range of threshold. So it's lower than uh, what we're expecting, and it's underutilized. Now, at the same time, if you want to take a look at more details to, uh, about uh, the information of the device, we can go to the graph model. And by looking at all this data here, we can see that uh, if the device is abnormal, we can make sure and we can verify that it has abnormal value or what is exactly the type of that. The type of two in this use case indicates that there's a problem with upload speed. And also, we can check uh, the other components, the other attributes, such as CPU usage, memory usage, to make sure that um, maybe other information has some issue as well, can tell us more issue. In this use case, uh, they uh, used three different cases. They implemented three different cases uh, to overcome their issue and solve their problem. One of the use cases that they use, as you can see in this slide, is the LCU, LCA rule, uh, which also uh, is the same as LCA algorithm. And the algorithm in this explains, uh, you can see it here, it explains here. It indicates that through our system, we should loop through all the nodes. We should find the uh, basic devices that has the value of one for their abnormal attribute. And then we climb up to the upper layer of that uh, device, and then we check its abnormal value as well. And we should continue this process until we get to the abnormal value of zero, which indicates that the device is normal and it's not abnormal, doesn't have any issue. So to look at it better, we can look at this structure. We can see that, let's say, this is our IoT device. And this orangish color or gold color indicates that uh, in this example, there's a problem. So let's look at this IoT device. The abnormal value in this case is one. Then we climb up to the next layer. The modem, we're going to check the abnormal value, which is one here as well. Then we climb up to the upper layer, which is the DCU. We know that the abnormal is one as well. Then we have to go to the upper layer. We check that value as well, the abnormal, which is one, indicates that Still, there's an issue. We climb up to the next layer, <coughs> FEP, and we check the value. Value is zero, which indicates that everything is normal. So now we know that the lower layer, the device in the lower layer of that, causing the issue. And this is our point of failure. So this is basically what LCA algorithm is uh, trying to solve and say. Now, by saying that, uh, they were also uh, able uh, to come up with a really great idea and with a really, um, I can say, really nice idea in this case. So what they did, uh, by going through all those abnormalities in the different devices, they were able to also to see, as I mentioned, they have a value of uh, type as well. So what they did, they looked through that 
abnormal type of each device separately, and after that, they concatenate all those types. For example, here, DCU23 has abnormal type 4, and modem has abnormal type 2, and IoT has abnormal type 1. So after concatenate 4, 2, 1 to each other, they were able to uh, basically create a code for that specific pattern, uh, which, were, which helped them uh, to have it already there and uh, to have some patterns. So if something happened again, if there was an issue, if there was a failure, they already knew that this pattern has an issue. So they could quickly go and check this uh, pattern and to make sure if it's the same issue or not. If not, they can fastly move on to their next um, solution and next pattern. And uh, as you can see, this is abnormal type. As I mentioned before, it indicates what specific uh, abnormality each device has. The next case uh, that uh, they used here uh, was a three sigma rule. So they determined threshold based on that three sigma rule. They set multiple thresholds upon the power usage by time. As we know, the power usage is different in the daytime and in the nighttime. So they use this and also the three sigma rule uh, to uh, have a better solution as well. And also uh, another case, which is case three, they stored each failure pattern into the database. And uh, they start to uh, comparing all those clusters and patterns by adding sometimes and creating dummy uh, nodes to uh, find those failures. And uh, by using all these cases and by uh, basically uh, using the multi-model feature of agents graph, they were able uh, to avoid all those costs, all those billing issues, and uh, they were able to uh, fastly uh, discover and find the point of failure in case of failure. So, uh, and now um, I would like to do a quick demo on the same use case uh, to show you uh, how actually this works uh, in the real time. So uh, in this case, uh, I will move uh, to our visualization tool, uh, which is called Agents Graph. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is our visualization tool, as I mentioned before, called uh, Agents uh, Browser. Sorry. And um, so as you can see, this is the same structure as I was talking and uh, pointing out to it. This is a different layer of the network, as you can see. We have our AMI layer, which there's all the IoT devices. We have our modem. We have our DCU layer, and we have our FEP layer. So same structure, this is a network topology. So we saved all those information regarding the network topology in this structure. And also at the same time, as I mentioned in our use case, all the real-time information, time series information regarding each device, in this, in this case, are stored uh, in a table format uh, in the storage of agents graph. So uh, for this, I, I prepared some uh, queries uh, to give you a better, uh, basically, uh, presentation. So uh, in the first query, what we're looking for, uh, we're looking for uh, any devices that are connected to FEP with three degree relationship. So basically, we're starting from our FEP layer. We're going down through this network. And we are looking uh, for the devices connected to it. And as I mentioned, it's three degree relationship, as you can see here, one, two, three. So by running this, and uh, by run this, uh, you can see the result. To give you uh, a little bit layout and all those layers, I can use this feature of Agents Browser. And what you're seeing here, uh, I can also make it a little bit more, uh, make it differentiated, give it different color. So let's say I use uh, blue in this case. So what you're seeing here, this is a different layer of that network. Uh, so you are seeing the FEP layer, then DCU, modem, and all those IoT uh, layers, IoT devices.
And uh, now we're going to move on to our next uh, query. So in this query, what you're seeing and what we're looking here for, we're looking for this modem and also the AMI, the connected to that modem. But specifically, we are looking for the modem and the AMI that are abnormal. The value of their abnormal feature is one, which indicates that there's an issue. So by running this, we can see that This, are, this is our result. And to give it a little bit uh, more layout, we can see that uh, these are AMIs in the red color. If I uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see the ID and the name of each device. Now, let's make sure that uh, we get the result. So we're looking for all the abnormal devices. As you can see, these are one, which indicates they're not normal. And also, same time, model. If we go here, check it abnormal, you see that they are all one. So these are all abnormal devices. Now uh, to move on to the next query. This is a really interesting query. Uh, this is what you're seeing here is a hybrid query, combination of Cypher and SQL. So we are accessing both our, uh, I mean our storage, both uh, data types, relational and the graph at the same time. Our inner query is a SQL query and our outer is Cypher. In this specific example, we are looking for a DCU device that a CPU usage is above uh, the threshold. So it's not in the range, it's above the, the, that range, which indicates that there's an issue. Also, we wanted to return all the devices that are connected to that DCU, uh, which has a second degree relationship to that device. So by running this, we can see that, um, these are all the devices, and uh, by, let's say, I can use this to uh, make it better. So by looking at the structure, you can see all those DCU devices. Um, you can see all those devices and that are connected to different, connect, uh, different devices. And uh, let's say now uh, we wanted to see the same, uh, basically, pattern the code that were used in that use case. So we can go to the specific device. We can check here to see what its abnormal type. And also, we can do the same for the modem. We can see that what's the abnormal type and also DCU. And to make it a little bit to give you better presentation, I can uh, make some different colors here. Okay, now let's take a look at this example more in detail. Let's say we are looking to this DCU. Uh, sorry, we are looking to this DCU, which is abnormal type is three. So we know we have now we have one number three. The abnormal type of this modem is one, and the abnormal type of this AMI is zero. So by concatenating three one zero, now we already know that there's an issue. Uh, uh, with this pattern. So next time we have this pattern, if anything happened, we can quickly ch check this pattern first. Now uh, we're going to move on to the next query, which is in this example is uh, what we're looking for here. We're looking for the DCU devices, which uh, it's underutilized here. So as you can see, it's less than 10. So it's less, it's less than that range that uh, the threshold has. So by running this, we can see that what devices are underutilized. So by running this and by, let's say, giving this layout, uh, we can see all those uh, devices. So again, uh, this is a hybrid query. And uh, at the same time, you can use Cypher or uh, Hyper query. Uh, now, uh, I can do it on this example. I was trying to do it on another one, uh, but uh, let's say uh, this is a better uh, picture, so I would like to uh, show it to you here. So uh, by doing this and by running this, let's say uh, you are uh, reporting something, you are reporting an issue, or you want to have a document uh, explaining this. So what you can do, you can at the same time uh, export this image by using this feature of uh, Agents Graph. So what you can do, 
So I think I minimized this. Uh, let me just. So uh, what you can do, you can save this image, and uh, you can see that how to export it. So I, I had to minimize it. Uh, so you can give it anything here. Let's say give it a name. Let's say call it graph one. And by submitting it, it means you are exporting it. Then you can see this example here. So as you can see, you can get this image, export it, and also attach it to any report or document that you have. Now, the next query that I would like to show you uh, it's our last query, which this is not really an uh, interesting query too. This is the opposite of what I was doing here. Uh, it's a combination of Cypher and query again, a hybrid query, which, uh, but in this case, we have our Cypher query as our inner query, and we have our outer query as SQL. So we get the result here, we plug it in to this outer query. So in this specific example, what we're looking for, we are looking for the DCU devices, that their abnormality type is two. And what we're returning, what would we like to see is the ID number of those devices among their uh, download speed and their upload speed. If you remember, uh, I mentioned that the abnormality type two indicates that there's a problem with the speed, upload or download speed. So by looking and by executing this query, I'm looking to see what are those values, how, they out of range, like is it lo um, like lower than that range or is it upper? So by running this query, and uh, also because this is a hybrid query and our other query is SQL, uh, all the results will be obviously in a table format. So if I go here, and uh, sorry, if I run this query and I want to see the results, all the results are in a table format. So I can see the devices that are impacted and have abnormality type of two. And also I can check to see uh, how are the values. Is it out of range, is it lower and upper as I mentioned. As you can see, this is 20. So actually one of our devices, if you remember in the slide, about DCU1, which is uh, offload speed was 20. And uh, also, uh, one other thing, uh, we have another tab here, uh, which is our statistics tab, uh, which you can see all the summary of the different statistics uh, in the term of uh, when you're uh, running any queries or any uh, hybrid queries. And uh, this is my end of demo. And um, so uh, what, we can, what we do now, uh, we are more than happy to uh, take your questions and answer your questions. So it's a Q&A uh, time. So thank you all for uh, watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed uh, that as well. Thank you so much, Inya. That was fantastic. Um, if you have any questions, you may use the chatting window at the WebEx console. So uh, one of the questions that I see here is that um, what tools do you have, have to help write the graph query? Um, so <clears throat> one of uh, the tools, I mean, uh, it's obviously is the CLI, command line interface. But if you're talking about the visualization, uh, um, so we have our own uh, visualization tool, which is Agents Browser. And uh, also, Agents Graph has the ability to connect uh, to other visualization tools such as Linkarius and also Keyline. And uh, also, um, as I mentioned, but I really want to quickly mention too, Agents Graph uh, supports uh, different uh, graph algorithms and also has uh, different tools that can help you to visualize and also um, achieve your uh, solution. Okay, thank you. Let me read uh, the second question. Uh, what programming languages uh, can I uh, use to work with Agents Graph? Of course. Uh, so um, our developers are really uh, passionate. So what we have, we have, I think, I believe uh, I can uh, say that we have all the programming languages um, for the Agents Graph. So we have different drivers um, such as uh, Java, Python, Golang, Node.js and C, 
And um, this is what I recall, but I'm pretty much sure uh, we cover more. But um, yeah, I mean, we cover all the main languages, so you can easily use those drivers and uh, connect uh, to Asia's graph. Thank you so much. All right. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please contact us um, through this uh, AS email address. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, our next webinar will be held in July, and we'll update you all. Uh, thank you so much again. Have a great day. Have a great night, too. Thanks. Thank you.